Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve Pitocin, also known as oxytocin maternity dosage calculations using dimensional analysis. Now, if you want to solve these problems with me, you can download a free worksheet on my website via the link in the description below. So let's get started. When solving Pitocin dosage calculation problems, there's a certain metric conversion you want to remember. You want to remember that one unit equals a thousand milliunits because Pitocin is going to be ordered in in milliunits per minute and you're going to be supplied with a bag that's in units so you want to be able to go from milliunits to units units to milliunits and memorizing that right there is going to help you out so much another thing you want to remember is that pitocin is given IV piggyback so you're going to have your fluid a pitocin it's going to be piggybacked into a primary bag of fluid and you're going to be infusing this via an infusion pump so as I said, we're gonna solve using dimensional analysis, but let's say you prefer a different method like ratio and proportion or desired over have formula method. Have a bunch of videos up there that will help you solve these problems using those methods. Here a problem says our patient is receiving six milli units per minute of Pitocin and we're supplied with a bag of Pitocin that reads 10 units per 1000 mLs in lactated ringer solution. And we need to solve for milliliters per hour. So with dimensional analysis, you know that we have one consecutive problem and we're gonna have conversion factors that are gonna cancel out throughout the problem until we get to our goal, which is milliliters per hour. So right off the bat, I know I gotta to get to milliliters per hour and the information of my problem, I just see minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start out with 60 minutes equals one hour. Okay, so I have hours there. It makes me happy because I know that's where I need to go. And I'm gonna multiply and I'm gonna bring minutes over here across and I'm gonna start plugging in some of my information from my problem. So we know that every one minute the patient needs six milli units. This cancels out minutes. Now I'm gonna multiply again, I'm gonna bring milli units down here. So let's see, I've got to get milli units to units because that's what it's supplied in and eventually I've got to get to milliliters. So we know from this thing that we memorized earlier that there are a thousand milliunits in one unit and this cancels out milliunits so right now I'm in units per hour so got to get to milliliters per hour I'm going to multiply bring down my unit over here now since we've converted here we're gonna plug in what I'm supplied with supplied with 10 units is equivalent to a thousand milliliters and this cancels out my unit and look at what I'm left with milliliters per hour I'm where I need to be so now I can solve I'm going to multiply everything at the top multiply everything at the bottom and then I'm going to divide so when I multiply everything at the top I'm going to get 360,000 multiply everything at the bottom I get 10,000 and then 360,000 divided by 10,000 that is going to give me 36 so my answer is 36 milliliters per hour here a problem says our patient is receiving Pitocin at a rate of 12 milliliters per hour. And we're supplied with a bag of Pitocin that reads on it 20 units per 1,000 mLs in lactated ringer solution. And we're solving for milliunits per minute. So with this whole continuous conversion sequence thing I have going on up here, I've got to have minutes in there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to sort of do the opposite of what I did in the last problem. I'm gonna start out with hours this time. So we know that one hour equals how many minutes? 60 minutes. So right there, boom, I have my minute, which is what I'm gonna need in the end. So bring this down and over our hours. So I can plug into the problem. We know that in one hour that patient needs 12 milliliters. That's gonna cancel out my hours bring milliliters cross and down. And we know that what we're supplied with, there's a thousand milliliters that contains 20 units. It's gonna cancel out my milliliters. Right now I'm stuck with units per minute. That's not where I need to be. I need to be in milli units per minute. So you gotta do some converting and pull from your memory bank of that conversion that we memorized earlier. So we're gonna bring unit down. We know from memory that one unit equals a thousand milliunits. So that cancels out unit, and let's see where I'm at. Milliunits per minute. I'm done, so now let's solve. 
multiply everything at the top, multiply everything at the bottom, and then divide. So when we multiply everything at the top, we get 240,000. Multiply everything at the bottom, we get 60,000. And then 240,000 divided by 60,000, that gives me four. So four milli units per minute is what this patient is receiving. Here we have a patient who's been started on a Pitocin infusion, and it's been started at two milli units per minute. Now the healthcare provider has ordered that the drip can be titrated by two milli units per minute every 30 minutes for a max dose of 10 milli units per minute based on how the patient and the baby are doing, like how's the contractions, how's the fetal heart rate, and so forth. So you've decided patient's doing good, it's been 30 minutes, you're now gonna increase them by two units, so you're gonna go up to four milli units per minute. Now you're supplied with a bag of Pitocin that reads 30 units per 500 mLs in normal saline, and you're trying to determine the milliliters per hour. So with this problem, they like to throw these type of problems out at you because there's a lot of information in it, and you've got to decide What's the most important information that I need to know so I can solve the problem? Some of these numbers are just really distractors. So what's important is this four milli units per minute and 30 units per 500 mLs. All the other stuff, it's good stuff to know, but it's not what we need to know to solve the problem. So we're trying to get to milliliters per hour, therefore I need an hour here in these conversion factors. So what I'm gonna start out with is minutes because that's what I have what's ordered, so again, it's gonna be 60 minutes is equivalent to what? One hour. Bring minutes over here. We know that every minute the patient is receiving four milli units because that's what we've increased the drip to. This cancels out minutes. Now let's bring this milli units over here. We know that from our conversion that we have memorized, that there are a thousand milli units in one unit. And we had to do that converting because what we're supplied with is in units. So that cancels out milli units. So right now we're in units per hour and we're going to bring over unit here. And we get this information from what we're supplied with. We have 30 units and 500 milliliters of normal saline. This cancels out unit. And what am I left with? Milliliters per hour. Uh -huh. I'm where I need to be. So let's multiply everything at the top, multiply everything at the bottom, and then divide. So when we multiply everything at the top, we get 120,000. Multiply everything at the bottom, we get 30,000. 120,000 divided by 30,000. This equals four. So our answer is four milliliters per hour. Okay, so that wraps up this review on how to solve Pitocin dosage calculations. Now, if you want more practice on these type of problems, you can access a free quiz on my website via the link in the description below.